grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Gospel just read, taken from St. Luke, chapter 8. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Cast out all sins and evil desires from us, and pour into our hearts your Holy Spirit to guide us into all blessedness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When Jesus enters into a place, things change. Our Lord has crossed the Jordan River and entered into foreign territory. He has crossed the water and now goes once again to do battle with Satan. Good and evil, you see, cannot coexist. They are constantly at battle and at war with one another. That is their nature. So when our Lord goes to this land inhabited by demons, he is, if you will, taking the battle to them. I wonder sometimes why we are so surprised when the battle is hard and the warfare long. We wage against sin, death, and the power of the devil every day of our lives. Sometimes we may have a feeling of triumph, like everything is going our way, an onward Christian soldier's moment, if you will. But at other times it seems as though the fight is lost and that we are down for the count. How do you think this man in our text felt? He had been possessed not by one, but by many demons. Legion was their name, for they were many. In the Roman army, a legion is a unit of about 6,000 soldiers. Yikes. And like so many of our own troubles, this kind of this kind of possession tends to pile one on another. This man's spiritual oppression led to physical oppression, shame. These things rarely kind of come one at a time. He is naked, seems defenseless against the forces arrayed against him. Even when the people try to restrain him, they can't. Do you know that sense of pile-on? We hear it a lot in the Psalms. I think sometimes that maybe David's mantra was, I am overwhelmed. It's a common theme for him. This man is so overwhelmed that he is almost totally absent from the conversations in our text until just the right time that brings us to Jesus' entry into the story. St. Paul reminds us that Jesus came when the fullness of time had come. Now, that doesn't simply mean that God set off a big alarm clock that went off at the Annunciation. Oh, it's going off. i got to say, go save the world. Rather, it is that God, who is rich in mercy and kindness, orders all things, everything, so that everything will go according to his divine plan and purpose. Here again those words from St. Paul. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born under woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive the adoption of his Son. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. God has great plans for you. These plans aren't limited to where you work, who you marry, or even when you die. God's plans for you are far, far greater than you can ever know or understand. Jesus came 
to earth to free you from sin, from death, and from the power of Satan himself. Now this isn't a reform program. He isn't here to tell you how to manage your sin, minimize its effects, sort of continue to live your life in spiritual mediocrity. No, when Jesus comes, he does it to kill, to make a heart. He kills and destroys sin and breathes new life into a fallen, hurting world. For many years in the Lutheran Church, our baptism rite began with the words spoken by the pastor, Depart, you unclean spirit, and make room for the Holy Spirit. Baptism is all about this amazing, remarkable destruction that God does at just the right time for each one of us. Now this is when things really get interesting and sort of take a strange turn in our text. Look at the reaction of the people that Jesus ran into after casting out these demons. This man had been oppressed for years. We don't even know how long. And they had been caring for him, if you can call it that, for a very long time. What was their response? Did they rejoice that the man is now free? Did they throw a party and celebrate that one who was dead to them was now alive? Nope. Here again what happens. When the herdsmen saw what happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to depart from them, but they were seized with great fear. Sometimes, when God comes, things change. Really, every time when God comes, things change. People flee from what they don't understand. They were so trapped in their own sins that then when they saw this man healed of his possession, they didn't know what to do. Reality, that they did not have to live in their sins, with more than they could bear. So they rejected the only one who could save them from their own demons. Today God calls you to himself and proclaims that you are free in Jesus' name. Today God draws you again to the waters of holy baptism and will not let Satan have his way with you. As we hear in Isaiah, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. God has great plans for you, which you cannot even imagine. These plans will see you through this life to everlasting life, which comes at the presence of Jesus Christ. Come then and be refreshed and renewed by the mercy of God, his altar. He will guide you into all the ways. Believe it for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now the peace of God passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith and the life everlasting.